Hi, this is Steve from the Tech Circuit with a video about using voltage drops for troubleshooting. Using voltage drops is just another method that I use when troubleshooting to add to resistance checks and current checks. A couple of rules about voltage drops is based on Ohm's law is anytime you have a current flowing through any component and that component has any kind of resistance greater than zero ohms, you're always going to have a voltage drop. So if it's a switch that's closed and you have current flowing through it, technically you're not going to have a voltage drop because it's supposed to be zero ohms. Um, if it's a bake element and it's got a resistance of 18 ohms, then you're definitely going to have a voltage drop across it. And this is going to be true for anything with current flowing through it. Another rule is uh, anytime a series circuit is energized, all the voltage will appear across the only component in that circuit that has an infinite resistance. So if you have a burned out element, you're going to have in a 240 volt circuit, you're going to have 240 volts across that element, given that all the other components in that element are conducting, I mean, in that circuit are conducting. So if you have a closed switch uh, and a closed relay, feeding that element voltage and that element is open, then you're going to have a, uh, you know, you have 240 volts across it. If it's not burned out, you're still going to have 240 volts. However, if the switch is burned out, you're going to have 240 volts across the switch because that's going to be the highest resistance component in the circuit. And it has an infinite resistance. Everything else is conducting. You're going to have 240 volts across that switch. So this is just a, um, some of the um, advantages of this is, yes, you can go and you can do resistance checks and then you can check current flow, but there's a lot of things you can get better information from by doing voltage drop checks, such as a centrifugal switch in a motor. If that centrifugal switch is open, you really, it's really hard to test that if the switch, centrifugal switch is bad, unless you go down and take the motor apart and look at it. One way you can do it is use voltage drops checks and I'll, I'll show an example of that. Relay contacts. When relays are not functioning, the contacts are really open, then you're going to get, um, you know, you're going to get either voltage across the contacts or a lot of voltage or, or more voltage than you should. Another advantage of, of using voltage drops is that in some cases you, do, you don't even need to take anything out of the circuit. You don't need to remove a component to test it, even though there are some things you could test without removing them you don't have to remove anything when you do voltage drop checks. So, some examples. Here's a schematic of a Whirlpool dryer. This is just a classic Whirlpool dryer. You have 240 volts at your uh, supply. You've got L2 over here and you've got L1 over here. So suppose you had, if you wanted to do a voltage drop check, one thing you could do is just, you could just put your meter on L2, one, put it on voltage, put one and your meter on L2, like that. And while the dryer is running, and you can put the other end of your, your meter here, and you should get zero volts while the dryer is running on heat because that centrifugal switch should be closed. If that, you're getting 240 volts while the dryer is running on heat. Boom, you know that that centrifugal switch is bad. You didn't have to do anything but take the back off the dryer and find this, this lead on the heater. You didn't have to take the motor and, and check it. If you have um, your lead here and you check here, well, if you check here and you have zero volts, then you know the centrifugal switch is good. You check here, you, got to, uh, you have 240 volts, then you know you've got, two, you've got 240 volts across across that because you're, you're now reading L1 over here. Now if you start over here, put your lead here and you come down over here and you check this point of your timer and dryer's running, you should have heat but you don't and you're reading 240 volts right here. That means you're reading 240 volts across here. That means that timer is open and you could either check it like this, you could check it like that. That timer is open when it shouldn't be you're going to get 240 volts across because that's the only point of infinite resistor right there. Infinite resistance. 
Same thing with the, if you were to check here and here, and you have an open circuit, you've got 240 volts from here to here, you know something, one of these is open right here. So that's just a real simple way to uh, check for certain things using, using uh, voltage drops. So this is a little diagram here. So basically what we did was if you have your one end of your meter on L1 and you check here, you know the thermostat's open if you get 240 volts right here because that you got 240 volts from here to here. If the thermostat's closed, you're going to get zero volts here, but you're going to get 240 volts from here to here because this is the highest resistance. Well, okay, I'll take it back. If this is open, then you actually you're going to get zero volts there. But just to pretend that centrifugal switch is closed, you're going to get 240 volts from here to here uh, because that therm that that thermostat is closed. And obviously, if you check from here to here and, and the centrifugal switch is open or it's bad, then you're going to get 240 volts. When it's closed, you're going to get zero volts. Couple of just other minor examples here. When you check here, you're gonna get 240 volts. You check here, you're gonna get zero volts because all your voltage is appearing across the open switch, which has infinite resistance, and that goes back to the rule. Here, here, you got 240 volts. Here, here, you got 240 volts. You got zero volts here because that's closed. You can't have a voltage drop across a wire of any significance because of Ohm's law. Of course, you got your 240 volts right there. Another example, a bake relay. This is one way you can check your, uh, uh, suppose you have this uh, bake element right here and uh, it's not running hot enough. It's, um, it's taking a long time to heat up. Well, one thing I would suspect in this case would be, A, make sure you get 240 volts over here. If you are getting 240 volts from L1 to L2, then you know you don't have a voltage, a voltage uh, problem in the house or at the terminal block. But you wanna check this voltage while the, while the oven is on and, uh, and putting a load on the circuit. Doesn't tell you much if you don't have a load on the circuit because you could have a high impedance voltage source. So over here, um, if you check this and you find out you're only getting 200 volts, then you may have a problem over here with this bake relay. Uh, suppose that bake relay is closed and you're getting 30 or 40 volts. Well, you shouldn't, do, you shouldn't get that because the bake relay should have almost zero volts across it. it. Means the contacts in the relay are bad, they're blown out. So. Those are a couple of examples there about uh, using voltage drops um, as opposed to or in addition to current flow and uh, resistance checks for your uh, troubleshooting. And I hope this video has been helpful.